<laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to be going after a target which I didn't know much about until quite recently where I've seen some amazing images online and that is the Lion Nebula. Tonight I'm going to be trying to shoot the Lion Nebula and I've got a couple of hours of data on this target using the HA filter. I got about two hours before the clouds came in last night. But there are two nights of uh, clear in the skies forecast. Um, unfortunately there is a full moon so it's a 99% moon tonight and tomorrow night which is a bit of a shame. Um, but using the narrowband filters uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Might have a slight problem using the O3 um, but hopefully I can get away with it. So before it gets too dark and before I start to uh, collecting some images I just thought I'd quickly take you through my setup. So this is the setup that I'm going to be using tonight and I'll start off by showing you the telescope. So I'm using the Ascar 400. It's a 5.6 400mm focal length as the name suggests and it's a APO quintuplet scope and I've been really impressed with this telescope so far. It offers completely pinpoint uh, stars all the way across the field. Uh, so yeah, really impressed with this, a nice wide field scope. So the camera that I'm going to be using is my ASI 2600mm Pro, so mono camera and as you can see I've already got it cooling, so that's the fan working on the back. Um, I've got the filter wheel in front um, and in there I've got the Antilla narrowband filters, so the HA, the O3 and the S2. That's the 3.5 narrowband filters that I've got. I have the ZWO EAF, which is controlling the focus. I have the mini guide cam. So that's the 120 mini guide cam and the little F4 mini guide scope as well. That was the ZWO package that I picked up. And I picked that up when I bought the ASI Air Pro. So the ASI Air Pro is controlling all of the guiding and it's controlling all of the image capturing as well. This is all sat on top of the NEQ6 Pro mount, which I've had for nearly two years now, or a year and a half since getting into this hobby. It's quite an old mount. It was second hand when I picked it up. I think it's about 15 years old or so. A um, few little things. Got it all mounted on a, a, a longer dovetail because the dovetail that came with this telescope was quite short. I bought some spacers there just to allow me to balance the scope easier and also allow me to put the ASI Air Pro there. I also have a counterweight on this side. So with the EAF hanging off the, the left of the scope as we look at it, and the guide scope slightly to the left as well. Um, that meant I was slightly off balance. So this is a one kilogram counterweight which I've just attached to the opposite side and that seems to have sorted out the balance issues. So that's the setup I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's nice and clear. It's nearly dark. So I'm just about to polar align and start imaging. So while I wait for it to get dark enough to image, I just thought I'd jump into the Stellarium and show you where this target is. Um, and as you can see, tonight there is that full moon. Um, so hopefully it, we're, we're far enough away from that in order to, to get some usable data. But the Lion Nebula is in the constellation Cepheus. It's about 10,000 light years away from Earth. I have heard it's quite faint, but uh, we're gonna give it a go. Um, so if we zoom in, you can uh, just about see on on Stellarium how this target gets its name. So you've got the, the head of the lion here, and then you've got the, the legs 
obviously down here and then you've got this little faint tail sticking up so it should be a really cool target to photograph and the images that I have seen look absolutely fantastic I just haven't seen that many of them um, not sure why I haven't seen that many images um, or why this this target doesn't get more attention maybe because it is faint maybe because you know there's a lot of great targets uh, in the night sky at the moment and in fact if you if you just go a few degrees um, up you can see that it's right next door to the elephant's trunk nebula which you know is a, a really famous target which everyone photographs and rightly so it's absolutely fantastic um, and it's definitely on my list of, of targets to image um, but yeah we're going to give the uh, the lion nebula a go um, hopefully I can get some good data I have also framed it up in telescopius so with my setup with the 400 millimeter telescope and the 2600, which is the APS-C size sensor, it seems to fit this target really nicely. So I've got a little bit of leeway around the edge, um, but the, the Lion Nebula should frame quite nicely within my, my field of view. Um, it's not actually in the list of targets within Telescopia. So what I had to do was search for the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and then just uh, zoom out until I could actually find it. But it looks like it's gonna work well with my setup. So now all I really need to do is wait for it to get dark and start capturing some images. So the telescope's outside, the camera's clicking away and the first few subs have rolled in. The, the target does look quite faint, so I can just about make out the, the lion in the five minute subs, but it was really hard to frame. I was having to do two, three minute previews just to get the camera orientation correct. On Telescopius, I knew I had a little bit of leeway around the, the actual nebula, but I didn't want to have the camera orientation in a way that I cut off the tail or I cut off the legs. So I wanted to get that spot on and with such a faint object, um, that was quite tricky, but I think I've done okay. I think I framed the, the nebula quite nicely. Um, this is what the first few subs look like or the first sub looks like. So that's a single five minute exposure with the HA filter, that's um, with the camera called to minus 10 and the gain set to 100. Um, you can just about make out the, uh, the, the shape of the lion, um, but like I said, it does look quite, uh, quite faint. So maybe that's one reason why people avoid this target. It's probably not the best target to go for with a full moon, but I'm gonna persevere um, and we'll jump in the computer and see what the data looks like in a few days time. So I finished my image capturing for this target and I just thought I'd show you the single subs. So this is what a single five minute exposure looks like on the HA filter. And there's quite a bit of uh, detail there. Um, the This part of the lion is very faint though. So there's not a huge amount here in the HA. Um, but quite a bit in the in the head of the line, which is quite cool. Um, the O3 data is looking all right. And again, there's more information in the body of the line in the O3, very faint. Um, so hopefully I've got enough um, data to actually, to actually pick up some detail here. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the S2. So this is what the S2 data looks like. And there is barely anything uh, in there, tiny little bit of information here. Um, so I don't think there's a lot of S2 in this target, um, but I just thought I'd show you the, the subs. I haven't stacked the data yet, so I'll show you the stacks in a second. Um, but yeah, just need to stack it all now and see, see whether I've got enough. So I've stacked all of the images and I've got the master files. I haven't stretched these yet, so I haven't seen what they look like. So I'm a little bit nervous, um, but let's take a look at what the uh, HA looks like. So I'm just going to do the auto stretch. Okay, so yeah, the yeah, the, the HA is looking better than I thought. Um, so the lion's upside down there, but there's quite a bit of detail um, in there. Actually quite a lot of detail, a lot more than I was thinking. So even some quite quite a lot of definition in the, in the tail um, and the head. So that's quite cool. So the HA is looking good. Um, go on to the O3. I'm still very worried about the S2. So have a look at the, the O3 first. Okay, yeah, a little bit disappointing, so not huge, not as much detail as I had hoped, um, but some in the head, which I couldn't really see in the single subs, and then a little bit in the body. 
um, of the line. Okay, and then this is the, the final one is the, the S2. So I'll see what that looks like. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so not, not a lot of detail. Like I thought there's not a lot of S2 in this target. So um, be interesting editing this. Um, also quite a little a bit of a cast there, I can see. Um, or a bit of a, a gradient from the top that might be the moonlight um, let's have a look at the yeah it is, it is there as well on the the O3 um, not so noticeable on the HA so that could be the full moon coming through um, impacting on the images um, so maybe it washed out some of the data in the S2 and the O3 um, but we'll see see whether I can rescue it um, so yeah, I'll, I'll edit this now and see if I can actually pull together a final image from, from this data. So I've edited the image and I just thought I'd really quickly take you through the process I used in PickInsight. So um, this is the data before I combined it using the LRGB combination. And before I did that, I actually ran star reduction and I ran the automatic background extractor on each of the channels. So if you can compare it before and after the star reduction and the... Uh, the background extraction you can see this is what it looked like before so this is the HA and then this is what it looked like after that and I think it looks quite nice especially on the O3 and the S2 so this is the um, O3 so this is what it looked like after the background extraction and the star reduction this is what it looked like before so you can see there's a little bit more gradient um, in the the image before and that background extraction got rid of some of that and the stars just look a little bit neater so I ran that on each of the channels and um, then I ran the linear fit um, just to make sure that all of like the background on each of the image matched up um, and then I combined them using the LRGB combination so I put the HA as the luminance layer um, S2 as the red HA again as the green and then the O3 as the blue and then that, yeah, ran that and that looked quite good. So that was coming out looking uh, like this. Um, so very green. Um, and what I would normally do at this stage is run the SCNR tool just to get rid of that green cast. Um, but I'll show you what it looked like when I did that. So I thought it got rid of uh, too much color and too much detail from the, the head of the lion. So instead of doing that, what I did is I, um, I ran a green mask or color mask um, to or created a green color mask to to put over the image and then I tried to or played around with curves to try and balance out that that color to try and get it from from green to more orangey yellow um, that you would associate with that Hubble palette um, so that's kind of what I did I ran a couple of other color masks I got a blue color mask and then just a range mask um, and then after creating the starless image using Starnet um, I then played around with the curves to try and create that Hubble palette looking image. Um, after doing that, I added the, the stars and the uh, color image back together um, to create the final image, which I will put up on screen now for you. So please let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know if you thought I got the colors right. It is a bit of a challenge for me being colorblind, but I do try my best. Um, yeah, if you've got any tips for pick insight editing as well, please let me know. Um, but if not, thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.